Rock, Horns, Banger TV's weekly metal debate show where we dive into the history and the story of metal, pull it apart, and try to put it back together again. Reminder, if you're watching this in the archive, we go live normally every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to create the ultimate streaming service for metal worldwide and help us push over the uh, 100K mark. This week, we're creating a new branch on the tree that was generated out of our discussion a couple of weeks ago, a new metal, and that's groove metal. And to help me with that mighty task is the one, the only, Liam Cormier. Hey! Welcome back, my friend. Thanks for having me on the show again. Liam, of course, from Cancer Bats. And Liam actually joined us for the very first yeah. rendition of Lockhorns way back when. Yeah, where we battled on hardcore. Yeah, it was tough. It, it was, was tough. but we got through it. We, we, we survived, and you've, you've and come I'm, back willingly. And I've been welcomed back, yeah. <laughs> We're all intact. So um, it's been about a year. What have yeah. you been up to? What's going on? Um, just been, Cancer Bats, we're, we're touring, mm -hmm. and then uh, we've all, now we're taking a break. We're going to write a new record. Uh, cool. In the meantime, everyone's doing their own things. Mm -hmm. Scott's off recording bands in Spain and doing all sorts of stuff. I've actually started up a, a clothing brand, which is Wicked. what I've done in my off time, which is all motorcycle-themed awesome. uh, clothing. So I've just been Fit riding another motorcycles. Plug you and your wife have a shop here? In yeah, yeah. Right? Actually, in Toronto, my girlfriend runs this amazing motorcycle shop called Town Moto. So you can go there, get treadmill clothing. I have clothing. bought an article of clothing. There you go. Shop. Well, thank you very that. much. There you go. Okay, so <laughs> groove metal. We got some bands on the chart already, based on our discussion from from new metal. These were bands that you know people generally felt needed to be put somewhere else. So, when you, what is groove metal? What do you like about what we could call groove metal? Groove metal, I've always thought of in that same world of like stoner. So like stoner metal, stoner rock, mm -hmm. and actually it wasn't until you guys talked to me about this that I really had to like define it mm -hmm. and like think about like what is groove metal versus stoner. And I guess like that idea of like instead of being on the Sabbath worship mm -hmm. side of things, like to be heading more towards I guess like metal and thrash yep. in your stoner approach and weed worship, yeah. I guess, like <laughs> for the music wise. But one of the things that I was coming across, like while I was even asking the internet for help in defining it, was the idea of post-thrash. Right. Which actually, once I started reading that, like yeah. that really helped to like understand where certain bands fit into groove metal, especially later in their career, mm -hmm. was like a big thing. So I was just like, oh, post-thrash. Right. I think as well as groove metal, yeah. like makes the most sense. Well, yeah, groove and metal doesn't You're always like, work metal together. Metal should always for groove, me. bro. You know, we're not talking about funkadelic here, but yeah, and, you know, also it's true. Like it's hard to know where to put those bands after sort of that real big push of thrash in the '80s and the '90s. You know, obviously new metal happened, but there were bands that kind of retained some of the intensity and the heaviness of thrash, but. Yeah you know, in general, started to slow things down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, like, adding in a lot of the, like, kind of, like, more stoner elements that were in a lot of, I guess, like, alternative rock, like Alice in Chains, like, right. like that's, you yeah. know, almost like a stoner band on the Sabbath side of things, sure. but definitely, you know, not a groove metal band. Yeah, so, a lot of splinters happened yeah. in that sort of early 90s period. But I feel like really. everything just got lumped into new metal. Right. So that's where I feel like a lot of this, like, you know, stuff kind of happened where you're just like, yeah, all of these bands are new metal. And you're like, well, yeah. you know, so okay. yeah. Well, we'll get to some, you know, characteristics of group metal in a second. But enough from us. We always want to hear about you out there. The chat is an important part of informing how we're going to piece together the uh, groove metal story. And as usual, we want to hear not only the bands that you think should be added or removed, but more importantly, why. Give us your well-articulated thoughts as to <laughs> why band X or band Y deserves to be here. And joining us from around the world today is our regular man in Portugal. We got Iran, Serbia, Morocco, Sweden, Brazil, Mexico, California, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Cape Town, South Africa, Quebec City, Rochester, the Schwa, and Parkdale, and Fargo. Fargo, North Dakota. North Dakota. We have 
everyone. It's a global metal meeting we today. Have, we have everyone <laughs> for metal today's together. Uh, episode. Yeah, so, you know, we've kind of talked about how, you know, these bands tend to get slotted into uh, the new uh, metal category with with a bit of differences. But as before we get into that, Lisa Latasur is our trusty producer who rings this sound when you probably <laughs> when talk needed. Too much. When, when I talk too much, when for sure. Talk too much, yeah, for I've sure. My, we're gonna my eyes on you. you gotta keep me under a rain. Yeah. I'm gonna be fair. We're very excited. We may or may not have been doing scissor kicks doing uh, Roots Play. Oh, roots, yeah. So, There's uh, no way you can stand we, still uh, where that yeah, groove yeah, is yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on our best behavior now. Okay, here we go. What is groove metal? Let's talk about what are the, some of the defining characteristics of, of groove metal, do you think, Liam? So I always think of it as being um, riff oriented, mm -hmm. you know? So like that, that, that head bob, that constant head bob. We were talking about this before, like the idea of like when Cancer Bats writes a song that involves groove metal or has that vibe, it's like, can you drink a beer yeah. like while you're like still nodding your head? Like it's gotta have that constant sort of bounce, yeah. that constant head nod. spill test. Yeah, it's exactly, spill test. exactly. Yeah. And then I think, uh, Usually not always, but still focused on weed. Mm -hmm. I think is a good. You should have at least one song about weed. Largely focused on weed. Yeah, maybe band merch. That's <laughs> that's fine too. Yeah. But uh, and then I also think it's less like of the mystical. Right. So less like Dungeons and Dragons or whatever in that sort of Sabbathy sure. side, sure. where you're more like real life, like that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Again, that's a characteristic it shares with thrash. Yeah. And as we were saying earlier, like to me, it really is. It's, it's thrash gone mid-tempo. Mm -hmm. You really kind of think about it, like a lot of the, the guitar production, the drum production, the vocal approach to some extent is still very thrashy. Yeah. And you know, it wasn't until you mentioned post-thrash that I really kind of and I, all I that. I think a lot of it still kicks up to have those thrash moments. Right. Like even sometimes just in the solo or just right. in the middle eight, they'll just be like, dun, 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 and you're like, Oh, right. this is like where the thrash comes in. But it's almost like the opposite side of the coin no longer is the scissor beat, yeah. the bread and butter, or the <laughs> DNA of the record. Yeah. It's now the halftime. The whole is thing the is the breakdown. It's the whole thing is yeah. the breakdown. And you have like just the two seconds yeah. of circle As bit. Phil Anselmo famously said in Metal Evolution, <laughs> yeah. why do you make every riff the money riff? It's all the money riff. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. the next step we want to take is we want to establish what we would consider the legend of groove metal, it's basically the band that couldn't really be anywhere else mm -hmm. on our chart, and also all these bands would not even be here if it wasn't for that band. Yeah. Who's that band? So I would say, again, especially now that we've also included the term post-thrash, yep. I think Pantera is yep. like the quintessential like groove metal, sure. post-thrash. Yeah top of the totem. Maybe there were some bands before that influenced Pantera, but like we've said before, this is the like, this would be like the hate breed of groove metal. This is the mothership. Yeah. This, this is, is the mothership. This is the mother. <laughs> it's the mother riff. <laughs> we digress. Yeah. Speaking of Pantera, uh, when we did Metal Evolution many moons ago, uh, we did a great interview with uh, Rich Ward from Stuck Mojo, and he, I think, provides a really good, concise, uh, statement on uh, why Pantera's sound was so unique and innovative. Here's Rich. Tell me about the the sound of Pantera and particularly the way that th they brought a, a sense of groove in into metal. Yeah, I mean it was a straight direct descendancy straight from Ted Nugent and Skinner and all of these really classic uh, ZZ Top Texas Boogie and they did it with a massive amount of gain and a massive amount of attitude. It was just so different. And, and I remember after kind of listening to it a few times and absorbing it, and I just realized that, again, this was the band that was gonna change everything because they, not only did they groove and not only did they swing in a pocket that most guys don't understand, most, let me just say metal fans don't understand. I'll talk to people, I'll say, why do you like Pantera? Well, they're, man, they're balls heavy and this, but they can't really tell you. And to me, it's because they know how to sit on their heels. It's Metallica plays up on their toes, Slayer plays on their toes, and, and Pantera sits back on their heels. That's where the pocket is. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't know how to, how to articulate that. They just know that they sit there and they just, and, and you know, whether it was 5,000 people in a theater or where they were supporting someone in an arena, every person's head was back, was just moving as if it was mm. Angus Young playing back in black. It was the same type of feel. 
So yeah, Rich, I think gives us a good mm -hmm. kind of overview there. I like the toes versus the heels yeah. thing. What do, what do you think about living in the pocket say? too? Yeah. I definitely yeah. think that's like a great term. And I think like bringing it back to like the ZZ Top uh, ACDC kind of vibe, where you're like, yeah, that's that like constant head nod, but what he says like tons of gain like yep. that thrashy kind of yeah. element injected into that like ZZ Top. Sound. Yeah. yeah yeah it's almost yeah it's like a thrashed version of ZZ Top yeah that Texas that Texas thing well let's go to the board first of all we're gonna see what everyone in internet land has to say about uh, Pantera Paul Leach welcome back if one band must be on the groove metal charts Pantera I've been watching Lockhorn since its inception and they are the one band that's cited for groove metal in retrospect it's perfect because original glam metal which was influenced by power pop ie Motley Crue had a lot of groove so mix that with speed metal and the breakdowns of thrash and you get Pantera. I mean, let's not forget, like, the breakdown was basically yeah. invented by Pantera. Yeah. And it's impossible to imagine modern metal without oh, the breakdown. Oh, yeah. Crazy. We, we forget these things. Volum Nesti. Nice. Pantera has to be on the top, hands down. No other band had such a has such an impact and influence with groove metal as they did. Lamb of God are probably the only ones who came even remotely close, I'm sure. LOG will come up again on my way to Route 666, Pantera. Otherwise, I'll be fucking hostile. Yeah. <laughs> Omar, uh, uh, Sam, whoop, whoop. Uh, Pantera are the kings of metal, and they should be on the top, hands down. Um, tired of people saying that Pantera is thrash. Their groove oh. is good. We're, we're etching some stuff yeah. in stone here. Passing by says Pantera is the greatest of all time. Fucking wasted says appealing to popularity fallacy. Okay, doesn't matter if many think Panterrible are good because they're broke or trash, bereft of any artistic value. Whoa! Yeah. Panter, is this a Phil? Shot fired. <laughs> is this a sarcastic Phil? Panterrible were wearing spandex, wearing lipstick, wearing glam queens before changing to groove new Metallica sound after Pantera. Speed metal included talking about how angry you are, getting drunk and starting fights about whose jeans are out of fashion this season. It was a strike of idiocracy against the intense music of Metallica, Nuclear Assault, Overkill, Testament, Anthrax, and Level, just with more angsty testosterone. Hmm. Fucking crickets. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, dude, you seem really pissed about we're, something. We're locking horns here. We're <laughs> we locking are, horns. We are locking horns. Uh, I mean, but I, I guess will the say, point there, yeah, I mean, I don't know, derivative of thrash? I don't know. Pantera's yeah, I mean, that's, I, I feel like what he's saying is sort of like what we were saying. Like, yeah, post thrash, like, that's mm -hmm. where it kind of comes in. I right. don't know about, like, whatever Pantera was doing beforehand, but you kind of can't argue what they then became. So. Yeah. Pantera's up there. Yeah, it, it is. That. It does feel nice when the internet agrees with you. I'm gonna say <laughs> there's a little bit of like. I like when we lock horns too. Yes, Lisa. A, the legend is immunity, uh -huh. so it doesn't matter if people don't like it. Oh, right. it's been decided. The boss has spoken. There we go. Secondly, thou shalt not be ruled off the island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However. Not so lucky, System of a Down, everybody would like to see them go. Okay, System yeah. of a Down. Okay, what are your thoughts on System of a Down, Lee? I People also think they should be would removed. agree that I think, like, while they have some, like, influences of thrash, yep. I definitely think System can be in the, in the new metal right. genre. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, although at the same time, when we did new metal two weeks ago, people are saying, oh, not really new metal really? either. I mean, very political, yeah. very different vocal approach. I mean, Surge <coughs> was not your typical kind of yeah. baggy pant new metal dude. I, I don't There's know. There's still a lot of like body makeup, sideways head. I don't know. <laughs> Sideways Head in the music video is pretty new metal for me. Sideways Head. I think there's a bad name there, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Lisa, I guess there's other, a couple other bands, too, uh, that people have strong opinions about. Yes? Well, there are many, okay. and I think we can actually combine two of them in one. It's a 40-minute show. Yes. Uh, we we've got this. Soulfly up on there. Yes, we do. And we need to talk about Sepultura. Okay. So let's talk about Max. Let's do it. I love to talk about Max. Let's go to the board first. Michael Montoya is back. Sepultura. Even though they started as a thrash band, this is where they are most known and influential. Roots changed everything for this band. Even though Korn's first album came out before this, they had a huge impact on new metal and metalcore. The breakdown in Roots is one of those legendary, legendary iconic riffs that generations of metal and hardcore bands would later use as an influence. Well, we do, of course, have a magnet 
Uh, Liam, what do you think about Sepultura being a groove metal band? I, again, like like the Pantera sort of vibe, and again, not to keep saying the word post-thrash, but mm. I think that's where a lot of this stuff makes sense to me, where yeah. you're like, yeah, a lot of the early Sepultura is like such hard thrash and mm -hmm. like what we would define thrash sure. as. But yeah, once they started, you know, moving on in their career, like a bunch of other bands, um, mm -hmm. even, you know, like Anthrax and uh, like Machine Head, right. I do think that like Sepultura started going into post thrash, which eventually Max, right. you know, saw full swing. I mean, to me, Sepultura are three different categories of bands. You go mm -hmm. dig, dig deep back to the first record, they were like a death black metal band, basically aping Bathory and Celtic Frost and all these bands, then became a full on thrash band and then became what we might call uh, groove metal or uh, post thrash. So Volum Nesti says that Sepultura definitely deserves a mention at least. They were very groovy in the 90s on KSAD mm -hmm. and Roots. I mean, let's be honest, when we put Groove and Sepultura together, we're generally oh, talking yeah. about Oh yeah, especially those two KSAD, records. I think, yeah. has that beginnings of that. Absolutely. Like... Delicious Dishes, welcome back. Sepultura would be could be considered here because their Groove albums are probably their most popular even if not the best, in my opinion. And Mike Juring says, Soulfly, Max Cavalera, is groove metal. Now, what, what about, like, what's the difference then in terms of between Soulfly and Sepultura for you in, in terms of groove? I, I guess this is like the progression. Yeah. So I think like what maybe Sepultura would have gone into if Max was still in the band mm -hmm. would have been that more groovier kind of sound where yeah. I think it just got pushed even further sure. because it was, you know, Ross Robinson and Max being like, let's just go for it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, for me, Sepultura partially and then Soulfly fully. 100 P. Yeah. Fully 100 <laughs> P groove metal. Uh, Lisa, do we want to go more on Sepultura or Soulfly, or are we moving on? What's the plan? We're moving on because okay. I got like a bat signal call oh. from uh, someone in the Banger family. We take those calls. We take bat signal calls. We do. Uh, so DK, Daniel DK, right. uh, has a very strong opinion about someone that we're forgetting. Okay. And I think a lot of people on the chat will agree that we need to talk about X Hoarder. Okay, well here we uh, go. Okay. This is our buddy Daniel DK. Uh, I'm gonna read what he said about X Hoarder. Here we go. Groove Metal's classic feud is definitely X Hoarder versus Pantera. In my opinion, they both had an immense impact and deserve a spot at the top of the Groove Metal branch. Pantera had the drive, work ethic, financial backing, and God honest luck to take their band to the next level, while X Hoarder was stuck in the underground. But X Hoarder definitely lays the foundation for the extreme side of Groove Metal. Daniel goes on, starting with their early demos, they make groundbreaking use of the aggressive mid-tempo thrash riff, which in my opinion is the main basis of the groove metal genre. Intense and technically pleasing mid-tempo groovy heavy metal riffs. Aside from their songwriting, I think one of their big contributions is what they brought sonically. The tone and mix on all the instruments, including vocals, would almost become a guideline for the bands to come. I think this is actually one of the often overlooked influences they had on the genre and Pantera specifically. Go listen and you'll never be able to hear the drum or guitar tones on Cowboys from Hell or Vulgar the same again. So full disclosure, yeah. X Hoarder, like totally off my rate. I'm, yeah, and same. you're looking at a guy that was like, you know, you're more metal than me. Sepultura so. like plastered to his body as a as a as a teenager, right? Yeah. Like totally missed the boat here. Do you have anything to, to Yeah, to no, say? I was doing my research last night and I was looking up some of the bands that you guys brought up and yeah. I was like blown away. Like I'm definitely an X Hoarder fan yeah. as of like last night at 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I was like jamming it super hard, being like, how how did none of us know about this band? Very interesting. Well, yeah. this is the great un you, untold story of underground metal. Yeah, much props to uh, Daniel DK. Let's see what the board has to say. We've got we've got a few comments here on X Hoarder. Uh, Bangasu 12, X Hoarder should be in the chart because they were Pantera before Pantera. Rob Naylor, Slaughter in the Vatican is a total beast of an album. Even just the album cover. There you go, yeah. I mean, jeez. <laughs> I can see the image now. Uh, Michael Montoya, X Hoarder brought a sludge element to groove metal. They were also one of the first to start slowing down their tempos and doing more slow groovy parts than fast thrash parts. And Fucking Wasted says, uh, X Hoarder and this stream 
ends. So. I love fucking wasted. Okay. Sam. Yes. We have a magnet. We have a oh. magnet. Oh, I just wanted to lay you down the You just want to tag script. it. I don't, I don't see the magnet, Lisa. I don't know if we have a magnet. Thankfully, we have a marker. We have a marker. <laughs> Here maybe, we go. Maybe I made the magnets at 1 a.m. <laughs> Perfect. Great logo. There you go. Ex hoarder. Dare to be educated. Don't lock horns, yeah. man. I'm glad much, I was on the show. Much respect. <laughs> Paid off. Totally worth your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ex has been added. Check them out. We're gonna do our homework. And Lisa, where are we going next? What do what's what's the next uh, item on the Price Is Right? Uh, well, here's a band that hasn't really come up in a lot of shows, but uh -huh. a lot of people are talking about, which is the Machine Head. Yeah. Okay. Well, Machine Head here. We got delicious dishes. Similar to Pantera, I would definitely put Machine Head on here. Even if they had multiple influences over the years, Groove always was a big part of their sound. And Rick Reum says Machine Fucking Head from the Thrasher debut Burn My Eyes, which is still to this day one of the best metal albums ever. To the later releases, these guys just ooze Groove Metal sound. Yes, they've dabbled in the new metal sound with a couple of albums, but overall these fuckers belong among the bastions of metal in the Groove Metal genre. And Arthur Felipe Castanha, Welcome back, says, I saw Machine Head live twice and there was no groove on it. They were way Whoa. more thrash than groove. We do But I'm like, when did, you, when did you see them? Machine Head. What, what's, what's your opinion? Uh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I definitely think uh, tons of groove, tons of post-thrash. Uh, I think Davidian is a great example, mm -hmm. which I put on my own playlist, just to <laughs> say. Uh, and also, lyrically, I think all of those, I think they tick all the boxes. Although mm -hmm. I can't say if they have a ton of songs about weed, but that's that, where. We'll they have weed that merch, we'll so that's cool. that again, so. Yeah. Um, you know, I think this is really good because I have struggled time and again to find a place for Machine Head on the heavy metal family mm -hmm. tree, and I think this makes a lot of sense, and as I think you're saying, especially if this said post thrash. I think if this said post thrash, I which think this would be the internet unanimous. says a lot. Yeah. But also, I feel like the dudes in Machine Head would be stoked. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I, like, I think I that's think where you're like, Ex Order, Pantera, Sepultura. And to yeah. one of the comments there, yeah, that that the speed is there, but you know, when I think Machine Head writ large over all their albums. I think of them as being a more of a mid-tempo band. Yeah. Well, and I think that's where the confusing part is, is that we're saying that groove metal doesn't always mean it has to be slow. No. And I think that's what separates it from stoner. Right. For me, at least, yeah. like, really listening to that, where you're just like, oh, okay, you still have thrash elements yeah. in, like, what you're doing. You do shift back and forth, but mm -hmm. perhaps that more mid-tempo uh, feel is the sort of, is the fabric of the sound. Uh, Lisa, do we have any more uh, Machine Head comments out there? Here we go, the crazy one says, Machine Head is groove as Pantera is to groove, double horns up. Sam Troxel agreed with Arthur, seen Machine Head and I don't think they were groove. Okay, well maybe the live environment conveying a different side of Machine Head here. Liam Robinson, Robinson, pardon me, says, Machine Head brings a strong West Coast Hip hop influence to a strong thrash groove sound, and Austin Murzaka says, "I'd shit can Machine Head." Not, Ouch. Fa not familiar with the term "shit can." Maybe that's a positive thing. <laughs> so Maybe, yeah, we don't know. We shit can them too. Yo, bro. I totally know what you're talking about. I was shit canning the other day. I feel you. <laughs> I hate it when guys shit can. Shit can. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, so I think. With the exception of maybe a couple of comments there. Yeah. I'm going to leave Machine Head here. I found my marker. So System of Down, I think, still gets the big fat question mark. Okay. Um, yeah. Just because that, that previous show we had on New Metal, uh, there was a lot of people who strongly felt that they Yeah, and the internet's not it. helping us either. Yeah, so. no, it never does. Lisa. We're halfway through the show. Okay. And we haven't done a guest choice. Oh. How, how rude. Oh, it's all about you. Wow. Anyway, we invite him here for a reason. Spo okay. Spoiler, I don't think anyone agrees with you, but oh. go ahead. No one agrees with me. Like go. the internet doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. His sleeves are already up. We're ready to lock <laughs> horns. Okay, so you introduced the legend. No disagreement there. Uh, but what's your guest choice? What's the band that isn't here that you think deserves to be here? So my guest choice, which I do... Okay, the internet hasn't backed me up, but... Is this a Nick Sewell moment? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Uh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, so Crowbar is my post again. Yes. Groove metal, but yeah. also post thrash. 
Um, and my biggest argument would be that I don't feel like Crowbar is just Sludge or just Stoner. Right. Um, because I do think that they head towards this post thrash head nod mm -hmm. like we we're saying with like x hoarder like the slowed down tempos like i think there is a lot of connection mm. to all of these bands that then obviously crowbar stands on its own but i yeah. do think groove metal is where i would put them yeah i think this is gonna be an uphill battle for you because generally in the received scientific wisdom of heavy metal they tend to get slotted in with with sludge yeah, right. and or just stoner. Or so just that's stoner, where I'm yeah. like, as I was doing my research, and especially again coming across the idea of post thrash, I was just like, that's where I was like, crowbar. Okay. For sure. Okay. There's we some like, other ones I could throw we in. We like, but. we want to lock horns on this. Diz chew, crowbar, are sludge. That's all we got. But there's <laughs> the thing with crowbar is there's tons of thrash, and they right. have tons of fast songs. Right. So that's right. where I'm like, no, they're not, because like a sludge band would never have an entire thrash part with like a like a sludgy breakdown. Are they, is there a middle ground here? Are they proto-sludge? Are they the band that was sludge before sludge was sludge? <laughs> proto-sludge. I may or may not have said sludge four times in a sentence. <laughs> uh, here we go, proto-sludge. Uh, Diz 2, I associate groove metal with jump the fuck up riffs. Okay. And crowbar is really too slow and crunchy for that. It sort of sit the fuck, jump the fuck down. I don't know what it is. Uh, Guitar Bro 221, Crowbar are sludge. They're way too slow to be considered groove. Yes, Rob. Rob Naylor. I, I agree, agree with, with Liam. Liam. <laughs> is he your brother? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> even with the slower tempos, Crowbar brought a, a groove to sludge that you don't find in other classic sludge. And Sergio Rios is also here to your defense, Liam. Crowbar is groove in all caps. So I didn't get blasted, yeah. Okay, no, so I feel okay. Blast. But I, yeah, also, you know, went on to start down. Went on to start, yeah. you know, other things that yeah. I think. Yeah. So okay. yeah. There's well. a family feud though, because now DK is like oh, hassling us about this too. DK just Whoa. couldn't get it up. What, reading your quote wasn't enough? Okay, DK, <laughs> uh, love you, Liam, but the internet will not let you win this one. Crowbar, Crowbar definitely has moments where they teeter the line of post thrash, I guess, but overall, the band is a sludge band. Man, it's tough out there. It's tough. It's tough. And one more before we remind people that the guest choice also has immunity. So. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so Mike Juring is back. Crowbar is 80% sludge, 10% Anselmo. I would say 60-40. I would say like maybe... You know? Yeah. I'm no good at math, but that equals 90%. So I don't know <laughs> I don't know what the other 10% is, but maybe that's just mystery sauce. <laughs> I don't know. There's like whatever. <laughs> whatever. Doesn't need to be a hundred. <laughs> Our show goes up to 90%. Yes, Lisa. Oh, I'm with David. I Sorry. love locking horns, but I also like us to be friends. Oh yeah. Sometimes. Okay. So I think we're gonna get a big consensus on Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's which I go, agree. Let's go there. Okay, well, Crowbar, because you're my friend and you're Teeter. here, we're, you know, they're somewhere. Yeah. They're, they, All right. Living on a prayer <laughs> right there with Crowbar. Okay, so I think this is gonna be a big discussion point now. Uh, Lamb of God. Let's go to the board. David Hodson, perhaps my perception of groove metal is different, but why is Lamb of God not on this tree yet? Brian Osorio says, if you guys don't put Lamb of God, you guys will be laid to rest. I like but, what you um, did there. Shh. And Headbanger, Headbanger says Lamb of God are the leaders of groove. And man like Grave Worm, Sam will probably talk about Lamb of God for an hour. We all know he loves them. Aw shucks. And Brian Dowling, Lamb of God grooves. They have all the elements, tempo, lyrics, and look. I agree. You agree? Yeah. Lamb of God is definitely my, because we were talking about like, who are the new bands. So yeah. That's where we were getting to. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would say Lamb of God right, to me right. is like post thrash. As, uh, as humble host, I, I guess I would partly agree. Yes, this is a band that I like uh, a, a lot. Um, and maybe it's just that word groove that I struggle with. The post thrash thing definitely feels more comfortable for me because I feel that like, yeah, I guess I'm not convinced yet that the mid tempo is the bread and butter. 
Oh, of okay. Of God like, do you, versus the speed. Do you think of them being more speed? Maybe, but maybe that's just my See, thrash I was, metal illusion. I, I was jamming in. some Lamb of God last night, and I was just like, yeah, definitely a hundred. Okay, Guitar Pro two two one. We got into mouth riffing, and it's gonna go to shit. Lamb of God continued what Pantera was doing, and absolutely deserved a spot. And Huin Kuyuma. Pardon the pronunciation, if there's a successor to Pantera, the Legends of Groove Metal, it's Lamb of God, and Slam Troxel says Lamb of God has surpassed the master Pantera. Oh. Yeah. That's and bold Pantero words. Son. That's bold words. <laughs> Although uh, we like them because they're decent human beings, so there's that. Yeah, we, we oh, like that, that too. Oh, that Lamb of God, yeah. hey, yeah. 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 That's yeah. also, no, big, you know what? Big friends. Super nice don't, people. Don't get me started. Uh, know these Virginia. guys well. They've been on the path. With us, we put them in the title sequence for Headbangers Journey. Love those guys. Uh, so I think there's, yeah, there seems to be a consensus here that well, Lamb of guess, God is a groove metal band. And I think with a lot of uh, not NU new metal bands, but like just new metal bands, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of stuff where you're just like, what is it? Like American metal? Is yeah. that what you would define it as? Or well, we it? had the new wave of American metal at one point, which had like the Chimeras and the Unearths yeah. and the Darkest Hours and. A lot of those bands, God forbid, there was mm -hmm. that whole moment. But a lot of those bands are no longer around. But I definitely think yeah. the kinship here is undeniable. I mean, I remember and when like they first Machine came Hand out, Exhorter. everyone called them the new, the new Pantera. So I don't think we can really dispute it. Okay, Lamb of God, we've got some consensus. They are there. Lisa, what else? P for Pantera, P is also for Prong. Prong, okay, here we go. Thrash Maniac 99. Prong is an important early band that combined mid-tempo thrash riffs with hardcore tendencies. They released the first groove metal album with Beg to Differ in 1990, months before Pantera, but who's counting? Uh, Pantera's, uh, it was 84 days. Uh, Pantera's Cowboys from Hell. And Dominic Von Riedemann says, uh, Prong really deserves mention as one of the unsung fathers of groove metal. Lost and found off Beg to Differ sounds like Killing Joke in a metal context. What do you think? Uh, I also like was seeing this coming up on the internet a lot, yeah. and I was like, yeah, like I feel like Prong is a band. Yeah. I also love Prong. I think yeah. they're awesome. And they were they were kind of doing their own thing at that time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really. I mean, when they w people reference Beg to Differ, obviously the band has continued since then. But, but I think it is like they were one of those question mark bands. Absolutely. That you can kind of go like, yeah. Yeah. I also love that Prong is still ripping and like doing yeah. stuff. Yeah. And again, not unlike Machine Head, System of a Down, Pantera, these are bands that have come up in multiple Lockhorns episodes, and a lot of the time they just end up over here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we've found we found a spot for them. Admittedly, here's my rant. When we start to open up this door, I start to think of Faith No More. Yeah. And these sorts of bands, but are is and that that's where you can what, yeah, what you and think? that's where you can come around to a lot of like you will you know System of a Down definitely I think has like a Faith No More. We were talking about Seven Dust before, yeah. like I right. think of Seven Dust and a lot of new metal bands like being very like Faith No More influenced. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I do think it's tough, and I think this is where kind of the line where post thrash kind of yeah. helps. Yeah, but yeah. I agree, I agree because. Faith No More, not post-thrash. No. We can agree, but Prong, maybe a little bit, yeah. but Lamb of God, definitely, Machine Head, definitely, etc., etc. Uh, Lisa, uh, where are we going next? We've got some other bands, or? Curveball. Curveball. Throw five, it. Five Finger. Five Finger Death Punch. Okay, Kelvin Dan. Five Finger Death Punch should be acknowledged as well. As bad cheesy as they are, their popularity, <laughs> Alone is helping to bring in new audiences. And Rolfi87 says, old five finger death punch is an important band in groove metal because the vocals of Ivan Moody is groovy and the first uh, and the first pace. The, the fast pace? The fast pace their their sound has. Uh, I think he means pace. Pace. Do you have an opinion? Um I I can other than playing some festivals with yeah. Five Finger and then being super nice dudes, yeah, uh, I don't really know a lot about that band. So, yeah. like, kind of just like I've only ever seen them and like hung out with Ivan, and he's super nice. Sadly, I can't help much either because they're not really on my radar. They're on my radar as a fucking big metal band. Yeah, but in terms of where they fit in this whole story, I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, maybe we need more help here. I've never really thought of them as being a groove metal band. Yeah, I, I definitely, and that's maybe what, because they don't feel like a post thrash band. Yeah, so and maybe, that's maybe why yeah. now that we're like more defining it as yeah. that. Whereas I think there are some newer bands. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone's brought up like Gojira. Right. I feel like Gojira, Devil Driver. Right. Those are some right. bands where you could kind of be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's more in the post thrash yep. kind of side of things. Yeah. Good point. So maybe we'll just put five full, we'll put five finger. I'm gonna throw your crowbar under the question mark oh, here just because I need burn. to make some room. That's cool. Uh, I'm cool with that. Five finger, maybe we'll just put up here. It's and, hard to uh, get a consensus on them because most of the comments are from people who just don't like them. Right, so. fair enough. Okay, we will move on from five finger. Did someone mention Gojira? Liam, Liam mentioned I Gojira. mentioned Gojira. Yeah. So I don't know if the internet has. A little bit, they're like, if you add Lamb of God, then you gotta add Gojira. Okay. Another band that Sam can talk about for an hour. I could yeah, talk about I love Gojira, Gojira for a long time, <laughs> and I would not consider them to be a groove metal band, uh, nor a post-thrash band. Uh, to me, they have so many different elements to their sound. They're more of a progressive metal band, yeah. uh, in my opinion, especially where they've gone. But man, I think you can drink a beer the whole time <laughs> they play, you know, in that same way. Especially in the accent with the accent. They're beautiful French men. They are. So. Um, they fall more into that sort of Mashuga, uh, very kind of mechanical. But there's um, a lot of Mashuga being brought up by the internet yeah, about yeah. whether they should be in and here. And also, maybe I just know a lot about the band. So many of their influences actually came from death metal. They were huge into like Morbid Angel, so I've always seen them more that way. But it's not about me. What does Sandman1201 says? Gojira is Prague, isn't it? Justin Fogarty says that Gojira's albums, The Link and uh, From Mars to Sirius, are basically progressive groove metal. Uh, yeah, uh, progressive groove metal, another, I think. Another branch is like... growing here. I guess we would put Meshuggah there as well. Yeah, progressive uh, groove metal. Uh, Brian oh. Dowling to Prague to be groove. Thank you, Brian Dowling. And, and Kinsey Martin, Gojira is groove in my eyes. They have progressive tendencies, but Gojira is groovy as fuck. Yeah, I think of them as being so groovy, but I do like this branch of progressive groove metal. Because I'm stubborn Gojira. and crusty, I'm putting them there. That's okay. I think the jury is out. Um, I, to me, yeah, there's so much more to what they're doing. They're so different than all of these bands. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Oh, they're okay. so different than everybody else. They're so different than Pantera. Well, and that's I don't, where... I don't see... If, if you have to create a line from Pantera to everyone, to Gojira, I yeah. don't see it here. And, and that's, that's where I feel like they maybe have more akin, and if there is a separate branch to like Meshuga, yeah. uh, Gojira, even some people were saying like Periphery, yeah. which again, I think they have a connection to Meshuga. I mean, say Fear Factory, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. again, yeah. sort of more robotic Progressive thing. groups, exactly. progressive post-thrash. <laughs> yes, Lisa. We're coming down to the last five minutes of the show. Okay. And there's some bands that have been brought up fairly regularly. We're mm -hmm. trying to get some consensus from our guests and from the internet yep. on Devil Driver. Okay. Uh, White Zombie. Mm -hmm. That was another one, yeah. Yeah. People talk about Helmet. Yeah. Body Count, Biohazard. Right. Discuss. Right. Devil Driver. Devil Driver, I definitely think of as uh, fitting in the groove metal. I would agree. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they're, they're. You can draw that line that we're now. They are defining. They're in the center of the dartboard. I would say, no question. Devil Driver. Uh, um, helmet came up. Helmets. Oh. I always think of helmet as being post-hardcore. Right. And so in that line of like, yeah, like taking a lot of influences from a biohazard and sure. you know, that side of stuff. Sure. But, being more on the post, right? Post hardcore, and end. so Biohazard as well. You don't think is a is a groove metal? I band? guess too much of a hardcore. Yeah, vibe? too much of a hardcore vibe. Maybe they do fit into that post thrash. I mean, they, they, I mean, they yeah, do, uh, and late era like Biohazard definitely has right? tons of right? po what I would consider post thrash. So maybe maybe we put them up there and see if people have an opinion. Yeah, Biohazard. I definitely think they belong more than certainly some of the other bands. I think you could also here. do it like in the same way that you would put like late era Anthrax. Yeah. I think like falls in that same right. line. I um, think we've got some Devil Driver comments here. Nicholas okay. Adivano says, Viano says uh, Devil Driver for sure. The last kind words were so heavy and thrash 
head banging but with huge grooves and brutal elements. Hard to believe the vocalist started in Cold Chamber. Michael Juba says Devil Driver, yeah. yeah. And Daniel uh, Demetrio says Helmet. Sepultura and Pantera took lots of elements of their sound. Holy fuck! Yeah, he's... interesting. Yeah, I don't know, Helmet. Helmet, I think, influenced a lot of those bands. Helmet's tough, too, because you're like the Melvins? Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, ah. Uh... Totally. But White Zombie. I saw White Zombie coming up a lot on the internet, right. and I'm also like, yeah, I think like of White Zombie being I think White Zombie, a post-thrash. For sure, for sure. Groove metal right in the... I mean, yeah, I mean, Helmet may have been just too early. I mean, if I guess maybe in one way of thinking about it, like... If you're coming before Pantera, then... But there's no thrash in even, Helmet. No, agreed. And that's, agreed. I think, where you still need to have some of that element. Yeah. Uh, even though Comet. everyone's yelling at me about Crowbar. <laughs> I saw Comet go by, and I didn't have a chance to grab it, so if it's yours, I apologize for not getting your name, but they said groove metal was invented as a term when grunge came around. To right. call metal something else yeah. because like thrash was now out of fashion. Yeah, I think it's that, the same band. It's a very, it's a valid point. I mean, I think you oh, saw. Okay. Yeah, new metal was similar in that sense, just a bit later. Mm. Uh, I, I, I think, but I think that's. I mean, yeah, that's, that was a, it was a lonely, vast. There was tumbleweeds rolling down that metal landscape, right in the early '90s. What the fuck are we gonna call it? And then, yet we all remember it was basically from a popular, per, popular metal perspective. It was really only Pantera and a slightly sort of misguided Metallica uh, waving <laughs> the flag uh, at, at that time. Omar Sam is adding a super joint ritual. Has got to be on the board, dude. Yeah, I feel like there's all those, like, oh. you could say, well, because you're like, yeah, damage plan, super joint, right. like, uh, hell yeah. This is like, yeah, all the Pantera bands yeah. still kind of sound like Pantera. Yeah. So yeah. that's sort of like, we know, dude. I'm not so sure. I don't think one comment makes a, an inclusion. Just throwing it out there. Uh, last one. Yeah. Black Label Society. Black Label Society. Because people are yelling at me. They're yelling, yelling at me. About yeah, adding BLS. BLS is tough. It uh, is tough. Because I do think there's a lot of that, you know, around the same time. Yeah. I always think of Black Label as sounding like, and maybe this isn't a bad definition, but just like a heavier Alice in Chains. Like right. more metal. And I like, yeah. you know, both bands. So that's yeah. why I'm like, oh, when I listen to them or when I see them, I'm like, yeah, this is just like a heavier Alice but in Chains. But to play the devil's advocate, I mean, if we don't put BLS here, where do you put them? But, I mean, we have so much going on in the question mark. True enough. And again, we're drawing this, like, really easy line. Yeah. Like, I don't think BLS has thrash. Yeah. From my knowledge. No. Again. They've got the boogie. Maybe Yeah, the they've thrash. got some of that boogie, but that's, yeah. again, what, like, puts... You know, yeah. them not in the post thrash. I think it's got to be post thrash if it's a groove metal. I think we've landed on something. Are we ready to wrap it up, Lisa Latasur? We are. One thought. Yes. If you cannot draw any line, however wiggly, back to Pantera, do they yeah. belong or not? I think that's something we've arrived or at. Or at least X Hoarder. <laughs> Your new favorite band. <laughs> new fa getting a back patch. Total posers. We'll be in X Order Total. shirts next week. Uh, <laughs> we knew them from their first demo. Bandanas. <laughs> Sorter for life. Sorter. Um, yeah, I agree. I think Pantera is the. It's like Sabbath is to Stoner or something like that. You know, like if you don't have a touch of that groove, a touch of that dime bag sound, a touch of that yeah. that drawl. Yeah. Whatever it is. Uh, Thrash ZZ Top, yep. it has to... Ju will not be groove metal in that case. Okay, Lisa, I think we're ready to wrap up this week's edition of Lockhorns. I think we are. Excellent. Liam? Thanks thank for having me. Time. This is great. You bet, man. Educational. That was a lot of fun. Lisa, do we have a comment of the week this week? Or oh. what are we thinking? I thought the 80, maybe the 80-10 comment. That was my favorite. I like it. 80% one and 10% and I'll this, go with the that. rest is just yeah. pure mystery, people. Sure. <laughs> we like it. Okay, so thanks to Liam, Lisa, Daniel, Andrew, and Craig. Uh, follow us on Apple Music. Uh, we're the, the metal curators there. Important programming note. We're taking a hiatus next week. No lock horns. We'll be back in two weeks with the next edition, and we'll be back at our usual time, 5 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, please subscribe. Yes, Lisa? We actually do know what we're coming back with. We do! We oh. do! It's just in. Surpri it's a surprise to Sam Dunn. It is! <laughs> but we'll show it to the audience. We're back in two weeks. 
with Essential Albums Doom Metal. Okay, sounds like fun. Essential Albums Doom Metal, two weeks time. Uh, thanks for joining us on Lockhorns. We'll see you around. <laughs>